if you uh, if you get two black balls today, you're not allowed to become a mason. This, by the way, is basalt, of which the moho discontinuity is made of. Hmm. Hello. Hello, Glenn. Yep. Hey, it's Dana. Or Danny boy. How's it going? <laughs> not so bad, not so bad. How about yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. It's good to hear. Hey? So that's good to hear. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought you were calling to uh, say that you had uh, uh, bought a bag of chicken feed or something. Yeah, that's coming. Trust me, it's coming. I'm moving into a new apartment like next week, so I've been kind of yeah. stuck doing that as far as uh, my money. <laughs> but, but I actually I pulled the receipt out today, and it's on my uh, my little coffee table. So yeah. as you a reminder, <laughs> you can trade it in for a month of uh, playing music out in the field. There. <laughs> <laughs> My arms might get tired, but I'll, uh, okay, I'll try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I didn't forget about you. I was actually even talking about that today, with uh, before I called you. I have to do that. <laughs> but the what chickens, else? not for you though. You know, just for the chickens. Okay. <laughs> for the chickens, not for you. You know. <laughs> yeah, for the chickens. Yeah. Especially it's starting to get cold. I called from uh, Boston yesterday, and. Uh, we were on the phone for almost two hours, and uh, at the end, uh, just before I hung up, I said, you know, we all work for chicken feed here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're planning on a couple of hours on the telephone with me, you might consider sending $20 to buy a bag of chicken feed. It, yeah. Chicken feed? We <laughs> all work for chicken feed? <laughs> You are nuts. You are. <laughs> got to put it in context here. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got these chickens that have to be fed. <laughs> right. You know the old the old farm thing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I still got to do that. I got to send you your pictures. Like, there's yeah. a whole bunch of there's a list of things I have to do. <laughs> and Mika told me she saw a picture that you put on the net or something about the clouds. The full model mm. pictures in the clouds or something. Yep. Yep. I'm just curious to see if people can even see that. Tell you the truth. Because yeah. <laughs> I saw about two or three different. Um, I saw an eagle blowing. It was like uh, probably central Canada. There's a face of an eagle, like a bald eagle, I'd say. Yeah. And then there was a another face right above. Maybe it could be a play on on you. It was like another face that kind of. If you were a cloud, maybe. <laughs> um, right above where your house is, a little bit. I actually saved the picture, so I'll, I'll try to maybe send it to you. You can open the link up or something. But, but uh, I was like, oh, I wonder what that means. But that was last night around uh, maybe 1 or 2 a.m. or this morning. Uh, oh, you're uh, you're in a movie. I am? Yeah, you're in uh, 2012. You're actually, yeah, you're in there. <laughs> you're played by uh, what's his name? Uh, Woody Harrelson. I don't know if you know him. Wouldn't surprise me because uh, when I had the um, the site going on a regular basis, uh, every time I went to check the tracker, mm -hmm. there were three or four different companies that we basically tracked to being. Hollywood script writing places. <laughs> but I mean, he even looks like he's got the long hair. Actually, he looks like how when I was up there, you know, when you have like that headband type of like, he's got that same hair and the same beard. I mean, it looks, and he lives in a trailer. <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's, and he knows he's got maps and stuff. Check out my maps and, and then everyone thinks he's crazy, but help oh, the crazy guys want the answers at the end. Everyone's coming trying to find him to find out where to go, you know. <laughs> when all this shit's going down, everything, you know, everyone's like, hey, he's crazy, but he knows where to go. Let's go, and, you know. They're taking planes over to see this guy while like the rest of the, you know, you know, the the, the novas happening, supernovas happening, and so they're in, they're in a plane 
they're trying to land on this stuff just to meet this guy to find out where to go. <laughs> and then there he is looking just like you. I was like, wow. I don't think there are too many farms in Canada that get visits from AWACS planes. <laughs> <laughs> All those coincidences, huh? Uh, Anyways, I hope they got the script right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an interesting part at the, uh, towards the end, they're uh, they're they're saying that the the, the government was building um, basically spaceships or something or ships, spaceships. They're they're hinting at spaceships to take them off the planet when all this cataclysm starts taking place. Then they were like, no, no, they're just ships. And they're gonna it's for when the waters come in. And then one of the kids asked, you always have like a kid ask because they're always curious, you know, so they're like, oh, how come, how come these ships don't have anchors? He goes, oh, they're not ships, they're arcs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how they were planning on surviving. And the water comes in, they just built these massive arcs yeah. to take the brunt. So. Over in uh, Tibet. That the ships are there for their trials. Yeah. Yep, I remember you saying that. Yep, they have all the government centraled in all in all the ships. Yep, each country had their own ship, and a seat on that ship was several billion dollars just for a seat. <laughs> you know, they well, you get a room because you live there for you know the rest of <laughs> ten thousand years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like wow. So, you know, everyone's sitting there in the movie. Oh, I don't think it was such a great story, and oh, they couldn't really, you know, oh, but, you know, I'm hearing all this crap. Like, you guys have no idea. Like, <laughs> we're watching two different movies right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> different theaters, or they're walking by on the sidewalk, and at least we're sitting in the audience section <laughs> of the theater. We're not in the play yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so. Uh, on your side, um, any uh, any new occurrences or updates from last time we spoke? Yeah. Well, what what uh, the cell and I have been doing uh, for the last few weeks is they are in fact preparing to make a presentation in court about sensory communications. Mm. So in order to get the basic material, and it goes back to you know the time when DNA was unknown by juries and unknown by judges, and, and they accepted the fact that blood was a reasonable thing to present as evidence. And mm-hmm. the first time they came up with the DNA, nobody wanted it presented in court as evidence. There is no proof of anything type of thing. So mm-hmm. they, they had to make uh, cases where they would present the evidence until they were able to educate the judges and jurors. This is uh, something the same. There is a, uh, mm. a double system of... Uh, listening in on other people's conversations right. in an open field. It can be electronic or it can be sensory. Electronic people accept today that, that it's possible to have devices that can <clears throat> hear people talk from a distance, but there's no, no data on sensory type of communication. So... What they they're doing is they they set up two separate places, one with electronic devices, one with sensory communications capabilities. And I get to choose a third place to go. Usually done at night. The first time was from about uh, 8 o'clock in the evening till 4 o'clock in the morning. I, I pick a topic, and uh, every hour I um, either speak it out loud or uh, read it silently. Hmm. And uh, the idea is I must be in a place where there are at least three cats 
they must be in places um, where they have at least three people, each one of them basically witnessing the the other two. And uh, at the end, uh, there's a cross-checking about if uh, the sensory people got the same message as the electronic people, and in the end, who is the closest to what I was doing. So we, we had the first session, uh, and then last week, uh, we tried a second session, but there was a delay. Some of the people who were to be uh, within the two groups of three uh, got delayed and didn't show up on time. So we, uh, we basically had cut it short at 10 o'clock and, and scrapped that attempt. And we're, we're going to try again sometime in the next few days or so. But we have hmm. to do it four times over the next month or so, so that they have uh, four communications uh, of an eight-hour period. Then they'll cross-check each other and come to me and, and discuss exactly what it is that uh, I was, in fact, saying, because I've written it all down. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, if they are correct, the sensory one will be more accurate than the electronic one, which is more dependent upon atmospheric conditions and stuff. Then they can make a presentation in a courtroom based on that evidence. Do you think they have equipment that can listen inside of your head? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Wow. <laughs> I, if it can't listen, it can sure communicate. I don't know. What, I don't know what's worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole the whole idea is um, to uh, create a distraction in a person at a critical moment. Yeah. In the, in their thinking processes, and so far it's used most often in sports. Right. I was at the plate waiting yeah. to put the ball over the fence or a golfer on the tee or a tennis player seeing a ball coming in his direction just before he goes to hit it gets distracted for a fraction of a second. And it, yeah. can, take, uh, it can take a guy like Tiger Woods from being you know, 95% accurate and dropping it down to 60, 65%. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen people um, are watching games and, you know, a pop-up fly ball, you know, something yeah. elementary that they catch, you know, since Little League, they sit there and, oops, where'd it go? You know? <laughs> yeah. right, they close the glove yeah. a little too yeah. early or something, you know. I think that, that Woods place. went through a period this year uh, where he was hitting uh, only about 60% of the fairways from yeah. the tee, and, and that makes no sense at all. So either they were working at it or he was acting. Yeah. He, was, he was bought out and playing a part if, if he wasn't being distracted by this kind of activity. It's a distraction. I think also it might play on maybe their confidence at that at that exact moment, you know. Like they lose yeah. their confidence and they, uh, they, they can't, oh, they're getting a rut now because their confidence is down. Yeah. And they can get the body then to, to produce the chemistry and right. link the depression. You, know, you can see it, yeah. When, yeah. Great. <laughs> For a long yeah. time. It's easier, I think, on you know, especially sports players used to getting praised, and also now they're in front of everybody messing up left and right. You know, yeah. <laughs> one thing if you're doing it by yourself, you could always, you know, but if everyone's watching you, the world's watching you. It's like they can really mess with you. I think. Well, that's what happened to uh, the Montreal goalie Terry Price, who uh, 
basically was was a phenom in his first two years for the Montreal Canadiens. And he's been through a period of about a year and a half now where he looks worse than the worst <laughs> at critical times. Right. They're hoping that he's now come out of it because he's played two games back to his old form. Mm-hmm. Tonight's his third. That's what Tom and I were sitting in front watching. Tom watches the game. I watch the players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He definitely watches the game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, that's, wow. that's basically what I've done. I've, uh, I've had, uh, uh, if you heard about it, a change of mind from Stephanie. I did that uh, she doesn't want to move into the house because I'm too suspicious. She said this to you? Yeah. Wow. She said, if people don't do things that are suspicious, I'm not suspicious. <laughs> when they do things that are suspicious, I get suspicious. Right. In any event... I hope that uh, she carries out what she says she's going to do, which is is to move to this area anyways, go to school here, and be part of the group. Because it's important that we have representatives of all genders, all uh, nationalities, all races, uh, and uh, certainly... Uh, important to have people who disagree with us as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't make a, um, a full complement of a perfect human being unless you assemble the close to perfect parts of 13 different people. And each one may have a, a 13th of them that's perfect and the rest of them that's full of shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's, I hope that uh, it all works out in the end. Uh, I think it's on its way in that direction. We'll see more next summer. Scotty um, has contacted me, and he wants to come back as soon as possible. Um so we probably will see him in the new year. You'll see me. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Definitely. Well, you're you're an important part, not just for who you are, but for your understanding of Japanese activities as well. And, and uh, the music, I think, is also important in setting the stage for uh, people thinking properly, you know, kind mm-hmm. of uh, a division between life as it rumbles around us all the time to something different in the way of music gets people focused better, I believe, anyway. I'll do, I'll do my best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's kind of what drew me to that instrument. I was like, "What is this thing?" You know, like, yeah. and I heard people playing it, and and I said, "I had to, I have to try it myself." You know, I have to. I may not be the best, but I just try to, you know, whatever I can, and I and I get my ass kicked by it every time I play it because it's, it's I, like not worthy to play it. Sometimes I feel it's just maybe that's my medulla kicking in. It was just, just I tear myself apart. I think I'm my worst critic sometimes, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that uh, uh, with the right kind of audience, people with functioning brains, things sound differently. Uh, that, you know, you're not getting the same whole hum that you get on the radio type of thing. Right, yeah. It probably will be very helpful in the long run. 
Yeah. I wasn't joking when I said I'll trade you that bag of chicken feed for a <laughs> month. <laughs> A month of playing out in the field. <laughs> if, if it only slows down the traffic a little bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was I was I was trying that angle too when I was there. I was like, let me get right next to the sculpture. So we got it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh, that that's what that that instrument I find. Like I, I like to go place like uh, public areas, not so public where you know, but you know. um place where a lot of people might be walking by, like a train station or something, around 4 or 5 right. o'clock when people are getting out for work, just so they can, because they're coming from a city or something, and, they, you know, nine times out of ten, they've never heard anything like that. Just to yep. break their, like, wow, there's different stuff out there, you know, like, you know, open your mind a little, or just like to stop them from being a bee for half a second, you know. <laughs> the, the brain is very much like an elastic band, and it's taut all the time it's it's really stretched out and when you come across something different like that music it basically releases the stress on it and and allows the brain to uh, come back to its original shape because if you don't do that occasionally it atrophies mm, yeah then you're you're lost. You're not able to do it physically. You end up with nervous problems and everything right. related to it. That's definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. So, what um, have you been hearing? Any more of those noises from un, from down below, or has that ceased? I I haven't heard uh, any noises from below. Um, the uh, the one thing that's different that I've noticed is that we had a, a visitor during one night that was uh, an ox, a, a bull, <laughs> cow type animal, bovine. <laughs> you, can, you can tell by by the shape of the the uh, prince. Foot, prince. Uh, that it came basically from next door. Uh, they have six animals, I think. Three, no, three cows, uh, two bulls, and an ox. <laughs> and uh, I, I checked, you know, the, the footprints, and it, it looked like it came directly to the gate and stood at the gate and walked by the area in which Scotty had his fire pit there beside. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I traced it to the back, uh, up up the hill where the grave used to be, and uh, that was basically that night. But two nights later, a set of footprints again appear, <laughs> And this time, it wasn't like just wandering around. If one were to put down seven, eight, or ten different things that we do on the site here, uh, each one of them was visited by this ox, suggesting that, that in fact, somebody was riding it. That right. that sounds a little strange in this part of the world. However, right. in India, it would be a, a normal thing. They're used for such purposes. Um, the, um, the strangest thing is I started checking up on uh, Siwa or uh, Siva, Shiva, uh, mm-hmm the god of destruction in uh, old Hindu mythology, Brahman and uh, Buddhist and Taoist and that kind of stuff. And um, he's represented by an ox. And of course, uh, in uh, some of the groups of that religion, they, um, they treat the ox as a god provide it with special quarters, it lives the life of a 
a king, basically. Uh, a bunch of people slaving around it to give it food and clean out its space and all of that stuff. But they believe it's reincarnated. Uh, right. Like the Buddha. Yeah. And, and it has to be a black animal with a white thing on the forehead. I went and leaned on the fence to try to get a good look at the animals they have next door and uh, see if it was, in fact, a bull, a cow, or an ox. An ox is supposed to be castrated. Have yet to determine for certain, but it looks like, from my point of view, which wasn't very well positioned because he kept looking at me, standing facing me all the time, uh, I couldn't see anything underneath. Like, he didn't even have a penis, as far as I could tell, well. which you would expect from a bull. Castration basically would mean removal of the testicles, and that shouldn't mm -hmm. affect that part. Right. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was not visible. There is nothing visible. So I'm still trying to see for certain what's going on. It's interesting that we live in Oxford Mills, <laughs> and and the the destroyer at the end of the world. Uh, Siwa, um, which, by the way, is a play on the word uh, Ami, or Sima, which Sima. is a Moho discontinuity. Um, he apparently has a consort, uh, goddess, whose, whose name is, uh, he has a number of names, one of them is Kali. Sounds a lot like Keely. Uh, but a second name it has is Ambika. Oh, really? <laughs> coincidence? <laughs> oh, wow. I don't believe in coincidence. So, strange, oh. strange thing. Wow, it's just like players on a stage, man. It's like... <laughs> I told her that this afternoon when she called, but, uh, and she said she knew she had seen it in some of the documentation. She thought, you know, that she was the goddess of destruction, according to the story. And I said, no, uh -huh. it's him that's the god of, god of destruction, and you're basically wife or girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> um, so I said, it, it's telling me that you need to get here because yeah. if we're going to stop the destruction of the world, we want all of the insiders possible. Now, yeah, it, it won't hurt to have an Ambika around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get over here, George. <laughs> I need to talk to you. But, you know, it's also interesting that she's married to a Mormon. Yeah, I know. That's like, yeah. yeah that's, yeah. Before I even knew about that, like, about a, just the Mormon thing, I was like, wow, how, the connection to your property and everything. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt that they play a role in all of this because they have the other half of the plate. Yeah. Go try to get it. <laughs> yeah. And it was given to them in New York State, so not too yeah. far from here, geographically speaking. No, not at all. It a lot, yeah. So it, it's you know, every day for me here is is uh, an experience. I I get up never knowing what to expect. 
and I'm constantly surprised at the linkages that uh, appear in uh, mm -hmm. pre-Ice Age lifestyle, troglodytes in the middle, uh, the uh, Syrian lifestyle around Hurry and the Hittites and Hurrians, those people up there, and then the Egyptians and and the 18th dynasty. All of it, to me, seems like the same story being repeated over and over and over again. Mm -hmm without getting to the conclusion. And that's why I refer to it as the unfinished symphony. Yeah. Waiting for us, as far as I can tell, to be the one that brings it to an end, one way or the other. Yeah. It's quite amazing, huh? And um okay, so there's no more of that noise underneath and not that I know of. But area. I haven't been looking for it and I haven't been in that part. I, so is the cell broadcasting some type of something around your house? Because i I'm telling you only I'm, that I'm calling you, I'm hearing just like click like every Oh, that's Bell Canada. But it's really strong that, that today. Is, <laughs> it's really strong. <laughs> It's really strong today, and it's a lot more frequent. Every, like, 20 seconds, I'm hearing it. So. Yeah. you got to remember that Bell Canada has an antenna on the house to the uh, north of us. It has one on the house across the street. The people's name there are Gorel, linked to <laughs> Gore. Yeah. Um, and we're kind of in the middle between these two, the people on the south side of us used to live here as well. And the construction of this house being basically an assembled prefab with, with no um, uh, gibrock anywhere in the house uh, suggests that there could be anything anywhere in any of the walls and uh, certainly a good shot of wind with a hurricane coming by would probably blow it to pieces. So this house has had a purpose from the beginning. The grave I found has the name uh, Patton on it as, as the person who lived here and died in 1865. By a strange coincidence, when you look at the 18th dynasty and the building of a new capital for the new uh, Ten religion, a part of that area was set aside for the nobles. And it's like uh, the, the pharaoh's cabinet each have a house there. The guy in charge of national defense, his name was Patton. Yeah. Getting AWACS planes flying over the top, getting uh, planes from our security services, SIGSIS, flying over the top. All of these things, I'm sure, don't happen on every farm in Canada. You know. So there is a knowledge of what we're doing. I've been attempting, as you must have read on the emails, to get through to the politicians. Yeah, the yeah. main the main one being Robert Runciman. Yeah, yeah. Usually a name that starts with R's, like Rockefeller and Rothschild. Money man. Into the money. Yeah. And his name suggests he's their number one man in this area. Can't get a a budge out of any of them, federal or provincial can't get the police to investigate police protected crime? <laughs> um, is it simply because they think I'm crazy? I doubt it. 
As a matter of fact, there have been editorials written in the Ottawa Citizen about the opposite uh, at one time when I was on Parliament Hill. Yeah. Uh, so the construction that is going on in the area on the infrastructure, the roads, I mean, every day, morning till night gravel trucks and everything is suggestive that something is being dug out someplace else in the area. Mm. Maybe they're trying to clean out whatever it is underground here so that, you know, those noises don't occur again. I don't know what, what the heck they're doing. All, all I know is that... Uh, the shopping center, the main shopping center that they are building was supposed to be delayed. Uh, that was spoken about early this summer until 2012, and now they've announced that it's going to uh, begin construction uh, in, uh, in the spring. Walmart is the main tenant. But the first one to build uh, is Staples. The name Staples sounds a lot like Abel, Honor Abel. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's activity. You know that Ottawa, the national capital of Canada, has enlarged its footprint by amalgamating all the rural communities around it to the point where it's now the largest uh, area for a national capital uh, in the world when it comes to rural property attached to the city. So it looks like they're preparing for uh, an additional million or two people into that area. Yes. Yeah. It played the they same know. way in that. Yeah, it played the same way in that 2012 movie too. Like they they probably knew, you know, their whole thing was the the Mayan solar flare thing that's going to come. But um, that yeah. was I think they had like three or four years preparation, or maybe three years. And and yeah. the big the big theme was like the guy was the guy who discovered or helped discover. He's like, when are you going to tell the people? And then they were like joking, like we're not <laughs> not going to tell the public. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They're going to want to get on these ships. I'm not going to tell them. They're all just going to go down, you know? Yeah. Well, at one time, it was illegal for weathermen to announce a coming hurricane. Oh, wow. It was uh, not that long ago that they authorized the discussion on the news about uh, major weather problems coming. I heard the guy on CNN discuss it the topic one day that they couldn't talk about things like hurricanes and and it was basically out of fear of being sued you get sued because it happens or you get sued because it doesn't happen mm. so now that they've made it legal uh, to speak about it they they've removed the, the threat of legal action if, uh, if it's less or more than what is announced. So if they did that until at least the 60s, if not the 70s, then would they talk about the possibility of the end of the world? <laughs> I, I doubt it. Would anyone listen? <laughs> yeah, and would anyone listen? They've dumbed them down so much. It's frenzy. Yeah. So, it has the the water hasn't dropped any in your in that little pond back there, has it? No. Water doesn't drop in the pond; it freezes. It's only but, eighteen inches deep. You're, you're talking about right. Oh, really? Or are you yeah, right behind your house. Freak. No. Uh, Whatever, like right, you know the one when you're when you're looking at with the old grave site, you can see the water right there. That's, oh, that's the creek. Yeah. Oh, that's the creek. Well, uh -huh. Yeah. It looked like it was standing. It, water. it basically would go down somewhat 
every fall, and at this period it would be at its lowest. However, for the last two years, or three years now, uh, there's been more rainfall in, mm -hmm. uh, in August and September than there ever was before. So, you know, I was walking on the back of the property, and, and there's still water on our site uh, next to where the fence is, uh, and just below the height of my rubber boots. And so that's almost 10 inches of water above ground in that area. That usually was gone when we arrived here in the year 2000. That would have been gone at the beginning or middle of June when yeah. all the snow had melted. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks after that, the, the water was dried up. Yeah. But in, in the last two or three years, uh, there's water on the ground year-round. I mean, it freezes in the wintertime. Especially this year, it rained a lot. So. Yeah. But, you know, they're listening in on our conversations. They're tapping the phone lines. They're doing everything they can to stop me from posting. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they keep sending me messages. Uh, your your program has performed an illegal operation and will shut down. Boom! Everything's gone off. The screen. I have to reload everything, and I don't know. It doesn't seem to be that they want to stop me because they don't repeat it. You know, the next time it, it, they just do it every day, kind of thing once. But mm. as soon as I reload it, they don't repeat it. Right. So they are basically trying to stress me, but mm. not. Stop me. I don't yeah. get stress, but I'm kind of You expect it, right? <laughs> eh? You expect it now, right? <laughs> From them. I mean, uh, when you've lived my life, by the time you're 69, you've had so much of this stuff <laughs> that it, it's normal. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Exactly. Kind of like... Uh, like I, I used to get really disappointed in people, but then now I just I'm used to it because everyone's pretty fucked up. <laughs> as far as you know, I, I mean, any, anything. Some people that this week as well. When I first arrived here, and I came to the conclusion about what was going on, I made a pledge that I would do everything I can to prevent it from happening, and that I would really feel bad if I couldn't stop it. Mm -hmm. But I, in, in the last two or three years, I've moved off of that position. I still would uh, do everything I can to prevent it from happening. But I'm not going to feel as bad as I thought I would if uh, I don't stop it by you know before phase one. Because the more I live this life, the more I realize that there's a whole bunch of people out there not worth saving. Yeah. And and humanity might benefit from their <laughs> disappearance. And if they all think that they're saved and they're going to get into these submarines or whatever and go to some secret place, yeah. But in fact, they're all going to be destroyed, you know, kind of parked underneath Lake Ontario or what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, those people, I wouldn't mind seeing leaving the planet. Right, the first ones. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The helpers and all this. Too. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I've even thought about it to like you know, I don't preventing this, bring but. Servants. What was that? I said I don't think they'd be allowed to bring their servants. <laughs> They might though. They they want to. Right? <laughs> Gonna be one guy. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, so I don't like. Like I, I was thinking about that too. Like you're trying to stop this, but if 
if they never know you stopped it, then they're going to continue to be like, you know, how they are. <laughs> yeah. You know, even even the regular math people. We're not the ones who are going to do the actual stopping. I mean, that's yeah. too big an event for us. What we can do is, uh, by creating critical mass, put the onus back where it belongs in the hands of creation and say, okay, we've proven to you that there is a uh, redeeming social interest mm -hmm. in saving this planet because there are people with functioning brains on it who are still able to decipher uh, what's going on and are calling upon creation for help. So as we hand over the responsibility to creation, then basically there's no doubt creation can make certain events happen or not happen that would allow life to continue on this planet. Under what circumstances, I don't know. As long as Creation hasn't lost complete um, belief that this place is worth saving. Because if it does, there's nothing that can be done. And it will if we can't produce 13 people with a functioning brain. So my task is basically to remind creation every day yeah. that in order... For me to be able to do that, I need the resources. I'm not asking for anybody else's money. I'm asking for money owed to me right. by the thieves who stole it from me, who control our world. And if I should happen to acquire those funds, they will be redistributed within a month to those people I believe might in fact form this critical mass. And not trusting in my own judgment, I'm not going to limit it to 13. I'm going to go for 30, hoping that in the 30 there are 13 who tell the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like for it's like looking for a passing grade on a test, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm waiting, and and patience has never been my virtues. Uh, my my wife ex wife used to call me stubborn, and I used to remind her that no, I wasn't stubborn. I was tenacious. There is a difference. <laughs> it's very difficult for most people to identify, especially when they're the target of my tenacity. <laughs> oh, man. But it's funny that the word tenacity has ten in it. Yeah. yeah. And it's attached to E-C, A-C, and it says <laughs> T-Y. Three <laughs> Two and one, you know, transmitting two and one. Anyways, that's where I'm at. It's going to be uh, a winter uh, that will continue. If Scotty comes back after Christmas, he's going to start on a trial. And, and the trial is... Uh, how does one survive if one is all of a sudden uh, confronted with the fact that there are no stores? You can't go and buy your food at the grocery store. How can one survive on a place like this farm? And I've got to teach him uh, how to slaughter a goat. I've got to go through how you kill a chicken, and then um, 
because it's the first winter and he hasn't done the garden thing yet, uh, we're going to supply him with veggies. He's going to have to try to live off the land, basically off of uh, goat stew. I mean, if he was Arabic, I'm sure he'd love it. <laughs> Being Scottish, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I go to good, though. I'm a fan. You're a fan of goats? Yes, to eating goats. <laughs> and oxen. Well, maybe ox maybe you could come and spend a week with them and show them some recipes or something. <laughs> I work on, we'll think of our own recipes. <laughs> eh? Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll combine. Maybe he'll get some uh, some Scottish flavor in there, and I'll throw in some rice stuff. We'll come make some new recipes up. <laughs> yeah. So he. Well, I, I'm down to learn that as well. That's something you know. He, My father has a farm, but not. But enjoy your company. What was that? He would enjoy your company. Yeah, I'll put in my hand. I wasn't raised on a farm, but my father always kind of put me out there, and you know. You know, took me into nature, and he uh, he actually has his own farm now in Pennsylvania. So when I go up there, it's kind of like going to your house, you know, nothing yeah. around and nice and quiet, you know, peaceful. <laughs> so that's when I get to unwind instead of where I live. All I see is windows everywhere, so I feel like everyone's on stage all the time, you know. Right. <laughs> so you don't know how. A, like, I was uh, raised in downtown Ottawa, so I know a little bit about that feeling. You know, yeah. it was within about a mile of Parliament Hill in Ottawa. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, uh, same feeling here. But when I arrived here, it was, it was for me, uh, a catharsis that changed my life, basically, because I never stopped, basically, to listen or smell mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. feel the wind. You right. feel a storm when you're in the city. You don't think about the wind. You know? Right. Yeah. So uh, it it changed my approach to to everything. That life is not being on a Ferris wheel. Life is much more interesting sober than drunk. Yeah, that's for sure. If the circumstances around make it possible, everyone should live on a farm. And maybe after phase one, that'll be the case. Yeah. And everyone's going to have to know how to... Well, (laughs) everyone should know how to survive, you know, uh, as far as living off the land, because that's what's going to be left. You know, you're not going to be getting supplies coming in every week, and, you know... (laughs) It's not going to be like that. I don't think so anyway. But. And your your uh, uh, menu has to match what's available yep. in the quantities that it's available as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And to know how to store food and store food without electricity, and you already have that kind of figured out, I guess. But that cold but, cellar type yeah. of approach. Yeah. Things like that. So that's that's what we're going to be doing this winter. If he doesn't manage to come, then it's something that I want to try, and and I'll be probably starting that in the spring. I hope he comes. He's shooting for when? When is he trying to shoot back? Hey. Okay. Uh, when is he trying to come back? Like around when? Christmas. Christmas? Oh, that's soon. Okay. Yeah, in January. Uh- he lost his grandmother while he was there, so she passed away. And oh. So they're they're having all kinds of uh, family reunions until Christmas, and mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. he'd be uh, more free. And he's got to raise the money for the the airline and, and yeah. Yeah. get himself over here. Might be better after Christmas anyway. I think the prices go back down. I think. <laughs> you hope. You hope. Yeah, I hope. Well, I pretty much got the drive down to you, so that's, I mean, I could do yep. it probably with my eyes closed now, you know, so. 
So I think I got how, back. How in. Um, much did it cost in gas? Did you figure that out? Um, well, at the time, well, what I did, <laughs> I uh, I filled up. I think. Let's see. It all depends on how much I start out with. You know, think, cause I know in in New Jersey the gas is probably forty cents cheaper than it is around me. So I kind of just coast to to Jersey and fill up, and then from Jersey, I made it to. You know, like maybe two exits before Canada, because I knew Canada had more expensive gas, so I got gas again. Right. But on one tank, I could on one tank till I you know bleed it dry, I could I could get to your house. So mm. I have a twenty gallon tank in my car. Right. So it all depends on how I drive. The, the mountains is what kills me going up. You know, you put more weight and everything. But uh, gas wise, I mean, it was under. I'd say. Let's see. I'll do a quick in my head. Maybe. Maybe. Put, uh, maybe under hundred, I'd say. Yeah. Or maybe yeah, you know, hundred and fifty, like maybe round trip if I did did it. Or I'd say maybe uh, maybe under hundred though. Yeah. Well, but, I think that's what uh, uh, Stephanie had paid from uh, uh, Massachusetts was about a hundred bucks. Yeah. I mean, I was also doing probably. 80 the whole way. <laughs> it was a long drive, but I got this about a six and a half hour drive with no with, with no traffic. Yeah. But there's a pe- there's people that are um, that are, for instance on the forum that the guy lives in uh, I think Rochester and that's only about a couple hours away. Like uh, I drove past, it, I was like, oh wow, it's just like a hop, skip, and a jump to your place. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are all talk, I think. So. Six. Six and a half hours from Ottawa takes one to Niagara Falls, so that oh, okay. that is a comparative thing I can use for judging the distance. Toronto yeah. is about four and a half hours from Ottawa, and Niagara Falls a couple hours later. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much a straight drive right through. The, pretty much the skinnier part of New York State is with the way I go. So yeah. I'm just east of all the, the lakes over there, and I shoot up that way right. through Pennsylvania. I mean, I could go the other way where it's just to, uh, all upstate New York, but I think it's a little longer. But, um, yeah, it's, it's no big deal, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> for, what, for, for, for where I'm going, it's, you know, and what you're doing over there, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're waiting for you anytime you feel like <laughs> Coming and spending some time, yeah. Even for the for a weekend in the winter or whatever. Okay. I just have to watch for the the blizzards you get. Them. <laughs> well, my car is front front wheel drive, so yeah. You live oh. with those things after a while. You know. Yeah, I'm used to snow. If, you, if you keep away from the big bodies of water, like you don't head for Lake Ontario. Right. Cross cross the St. Lawrence. Um, at Montreal, even you know, uh, that basically is the cleanest part of the drive uh, okay. from Montreal to here on the Canadian side of the St. Lawrence. Here, um, so huh. oh, I, I don't know if I told you when I left your place that um, that evening, like it started raining, you know, and then it started pouring rain where I was. I mean, I had to go maybe 20, 15 miles an hour with my wipers on as high as it can go. And I saw lightning probably about, I'd say, 60 feet away. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I better be careful. <laughs> oh, they are great. Here it comes, you know. <laughs> the the flood, the deluge. <laughs> oh, they are great. Yeah. Uh, no, it was, after that? It was, just, it was just creation saying goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes. Talk All right. To you yes. Enjoy talk the rest of your night. Jared. Yes. I'll talk to Jared. Jared. Um. Yeah, he had some some issue with like a, a phone, so he he's been meaning to to get to you. So as soon as his phone gets uh squared away, he's gonna be a. He wanted me to. I'll send my condolences. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good one.